Good morning friends. Welcome to Parnika Tutorials YouTube channel. In this video, I want to discuss about the importance of intermediate code and how to represent the intermediate code in detail. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. When we are discussing about the various phases of a compiler, we have divided the compiler into two parts. One is the front end and the back end. And what is the front end consists of? The phases such as lexical analysis will be there and we have the syntax analysis, we have the semantic analysis and we have the intermediate code generator. Intermediate code generator we have. Now, these four phases of the compiler, we will call it as a front end. Front end of the compiler. Now, we have the code optimizer. And we have the target code generation. These two phases of the compiler, we will call it as a back end of the compiler. Is it clear? Now, the lexical analysis will generate a stream of tokens, already you know. And this stream of tokens, let me write it, it will generate the stream of tokens, it will take the high level long ways and generates the stream of tokens. These tokens will be given to the syntax analysis and will generate the parse tree. And this parse tree will be given to the semantic analysis, will give the annotated parse tree now this annotated parse tree will be given to the intermediate code generator will generate the intermediate code. Is it clear? So the intermediate code generator will generate the intermediate code. If we does not have the intermediate code at all, let's take that from the source code we are generating the assembly code directly which is depend on the mission. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? We have a high level long base and now we are generating the assembly code which is depend on the mission without intermediate code then what will happen. If we have a intermediate code what will happen we will discuss now. When I was discussing about the various phases of a compiler I discussed one important point. If you want to design a new compiler you no need to start design from the scratch like lexical analysis, syntax analysis, semantic analysis, intermediate code generation you no need to write the code for these four phases. For the new compiler or the new programming language, if you want to design a compiler, then you can write the code for the back end of the compiler. Why I said the point? Because we have the intermediate code. If we does not have the intermediate code, then what will happen in the situation? Suppose if you have a source language, one source language is there and you have n number of missions are there, the target missions, on these target missions, this source code has to run. Are you able to understand you have a one source programming long ways and you have n target missions are there, then what will happen if you does not have any intermediate code, then you need to design n compilers. Am I right or wrong? Because obviously if you does not have the intermediate code, then you need n code optimizers and you need n target code generations to generate the assembly long ways for each one. Am I right or wrong? So if you does not have the intermediate code at all, then you need to design a native compiler for each mission. Am I right or wrong? Are you able to understand? As we have the intermediate code, we are able to reuse these four phases of the compiler whenever we are designing the a new compiler. Is it clear? I hope you have understood the importance of the intermediate code. Now let me discuss about how to represent the intermediate code. The intermediate code can be represented in the three ways. Let me discuss each one in detail. So the intermediate code will be represented in three ways. One is the three address code. And second one is the, you have the postfix notation and
and we have the syntax tree representation or parse tree syntax tree representation so we can represent the intermediate code in these three ways one is the three address code another one is the postfix notation and another one is the syntax tree representation let me take a simple one i have a plus b into c now this one if i want to represent in the three address code how it will be represented postfix notation how it will be represented syntax tree representation how it will be represented we will discuss now coming to the three address code if i want to represent this one it will be like first i need to perform the multiplication so i will take a temporary variable t1 is equal to b into c okay then you have the t2 is equal to a plus t1 so this is the three address code which is represented for this one am i right for this expression this is the way we will represent the intermediate code which is the three address code representation now if you look at the each one you can see that right hand side you have only one operator am i right or wrong so this is the first point you note down one is the right hand side you will have only one operator and then you will have the two source operands and one destination operand so that's why we have three operands at max so that's why it is called as three address code let me represent the or let me discuss these two points again one is the right hand side you will have only one operator and then you have the two source operands and one destination operands at max now let's take that if i am doing the unary operation let's take that i am doing only plus a okay then i will represent that t1 is equal to plus a now if you see that only you have one source operand and one destination operand that's what i was saying maximum you will have three operands one is the two source operands and one destination operands and maximum you will have only one operator in the right hand side so this is about the three address code and how to represent the intermediate code in the three address code form now let me discuss about the postfix notation if i have this expression if i want to represent in a postfix notation how i will represent first i will write the bc into c am i right because b into c i need to perform so in postfix it will be b c and this one after that i need to perform the addition so it will be a in this one so this is the way the infix notation will be represented in the postfix notation so even we can represent the intermediate code in the postfix notation also now let me discuss about the syntax tree representation now first we will perform the b into c am i right and that result i will perform the addition to get the final result this is the syntax tree representation for this expression so uh, with these examples i hope you have understood the importance of the intermediate code and how to represent the intermediate code in the three address code format and postfix notation and syntax tree representation if you still have any doubts related to this concept feel free to ask me in the comment section i will try to clear your doubts in less than 24 hours in the next video i will discuss about three address code more in detail okay i will discuss each one about the three address code if you have a function in the high level language how to represent in the three address code if you have a array how to do it if you have a loop how to represent in the three address code because intermediate code usually will be represented maximum times in three address code so in the next video we will discuss about the three address code in detail thank you for watching the complete video have a nice day